Hi, this is Derek Tsai from LearnMyBlogging.com. Today I want to give you a uh, review of this uh, book review of this book called uh, Salt, Sugar, and Fat by um, Michael Moss. Uh, this is a book I just uh, listened to audiobook and uh, read and uh, learned quite a bit uh, uh, about food from this book. Um, precisely, uh, it, the book talk about uh, the bliss point. Uh, bliss point is a precise amount that makes the amount of food that makes the food and the drink uh, more enjoyable, and that's the uh, inverted uh, U shape um, in the uh, for, uh, quantity, uh, pleasure versus quantity of sugar. Mostly applied to sugar, it can be applied to um, the salt and uh, and uh, fat as well. Um, <clears throat> and also, um, you talk about. Uh, uh, Grouping the data into light, medium, and strong coffee drinkers. Uh, this talk about uh, Gladwell's uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's TED talk about uh, ragouts uh, grouping into extra chunky and 35 other kinds of spaghetti sauces, uh, in in which the sugar is a very a primary ingredient uh, after the uh, tomatoes. Uh, number three takeaway from the book is that uh, we are driven to eat and crave certain food other than the emotional uh, needs and the taste, followed by the aroma, appearances, uh, and, and texture. So um, these are the, the key elements, the key reason why we crave for certain food, and uh, in, the, in which sugar is a very big candidate, a big uh, element of that uh, craving. Um, <clears throat> also, I learned that the that they use a lot of the food industry use a lot of the uh, design of experiments uh, to come up with the most appealing appealing taste in carefully orchestrated test test across the country to uh, engineer a certain food uh, product. Uh, very clever uh, applying engineering discipline. And um, <clears throat> number five, I learned is that uh, convenience uh, is a key. For example, uh, Jello has been remade uh, to in, uh, back in 1920s or 30s. Uh, been remade to um, to gel within five minutes, uh, thanks to a more um, because of more women women are, are working um, recently um, as we get close to the uh, 21st century. For conveniences, uh, a lot of the add additives were added. Uh, among them, the biggest one is sugar. And um, one classic example is the uh, tang orange mix. In the lab, uh, basically they make the tang uh, mix uh, in the lab, trading off all different kinds of uh, other vitamins except the vitamin C. So a very interesting story about vitamin C in uh, tang, how they make the tang uh, orange mix. I never had tang before, so I don't think I... But it's kind of strange or kind of funny, interesting. Um, a food company can engineer a product from scratch. Number six, a uh, food company employ, uh, deploy a lot of the, uh, an army of home economic teachers to teach cooking classes uh, using their uh, ready-made mix and create a fictitious chef such as uh, Betty Cracker and Parker and infiltrate the home economic uh, activities associations. Uh, very clever, um, part of the marketing scheme. And number seven, the cereal could be considered as candy because they are laced with uh, a sugar for, uh, for quick fixes. Um, maybe that's the reason why people are uh, addicted to a cereal. Number eight, uh, a lot of good history about processed food. If you like the book, uh, if you like to learn about the history of the processed food, uh, this is a great book. Uh, about cereal, about Dr. Peppers and potato chips and, and what have you. Uh, number nine, are people are, are eating more snacks and less, uh, and, and actually eating less f uh, me formal meals and skipping uh, main meals. And um, that seems like a, a trend for a lot of busy people these days. And number 10, uh, people are exercise their own will, um, but can they or will they be if they are addicted to uh, salt, sugar, and fat. So, um, 
are they actually exercising the, their own will? Uh, if, they are, if the food company managed to hook you into uh, those uh, three ingredients. Number 11, uh, this, um, my, my, under, my experience with the, food, with the book is that it has a lot of uh, re repetition. And um, that because it really cannot separate uh, salt and sugar and, and fat uh, separately because they are kind of all inclusive in a lot of the food these days. Number 12, um, the CEO, it turns out a lot of story in the book, uh, the CEOs and product managers of the food category do not even eat their own food uh, to keep off the uh, salt and sugar and fat uh, for their own health uh, benefit. So that goes to, to tell you that they don't eat their own food. Uh, number 13 is sad to see that in pursuit uh, over time and cost efficiency, people are replacing normal healthy homemade food uh, with these processed food that will eventually put them in the chronic illnesses such as heart diseases, diabetes, and, and, and uh, high blood pressures, and many other kind of diseases. Um, it's pretty sad. So in, overall, in the quick summary of the book, uh, this very clearly separate into three different categories. Uh, one is the sugar, and then fat, and then uh, salt at the end. So on the sugar, a uh, quick summary. Sugar, uh, I talk about the Cola War story of Jeffrey Dunn. Uh, he eventually repented and now selling carrots. And, but uh, there's a thing called sensory specific satiety. I explain why people are addicted to Coca-Cola because he's got a very balanced taste. Uh, there's no lingering, uh, lingering uh, edginess, the aroma of the vanilla, and the citrus, and the whole family of spices like the cinnamon and nutmeg. I never knew there are actually uh, these ingredients in Coca-Cola. Then you have the sweetnesses and the bite of the phosphoric acid and the tingle, a tingling sensation of the carbon dioxide bubble. So all the power of flavors uh, uh, really construct and uh, make up this uh, Coca-Cola. Well, interesting uh, story about that. And, and then talk about self-imposed uh, curve of marketing to children under 12. But the uh, local stores are the, a huge magnet for those uh, teenagers. Uh, they're, you know, they just grab a soda and have, make them into their own snack or their own food main meal. So teens are really spend less and, and visit store. Uh, they're spending less, teens are spending less money per store, but they are actually uh, frequent, visit the store more frequently. And, <clears throat> and then the, talk about the story of the tank mix, uh, designed artificially to make it oranges, but had, they had to add a vitamin C only to keep the good taste. And uh, so artificial flavor it is. Uh, fat. Uh, fat is a mouth fullness uh, feeling from the fat. Uh, it has no, unfortunately or, or fortunately, it has no tongue receptor uh, with, uh, to fat. But the, if you give a cookies enough bulk, uh, the fat actually give the cookies enough uh, more of the bulk and a firmer texture. So uh, make it more chewable and, and taste better. It does not have a real bliss point. Uh, the more the better. There's no negative feedback from the brain and say, hey, you got enough uh, fat already, uh, it, unlike the, the case of sugar or salt. Um, and it's hard to replace as people are taking really taste the difference. This mouthful uh, feel is very is unique to uh, uh, a fat. And they, at the end of the book, you talk about he visited the uh, Nestle lab and the mint Nestle lab trying to create a new fat, uh, low fat fat. Uh, that's supposed to replace the fat, and uh, they have a real hard time doing that. <clears throat> so, um, and fat is often linked up with the sugar in the candy bars. A majority of calorie, 60 to 80 percent of calorie, actually come from fat, and um, and it's actually sugar and uh, fat has a, has a capability, has ability to keep the uh, things uh, taste more fresh. And because you know, it kind of encapsulates the, the fat, and there's no, and also I found out there's no cheese in the, in the cheese whiz. There goes uh, uh, false advertisement. And Kraft's uh, American cheese, I found out, uh, is a processed 
cheese that actually left over um, from the bottom of the pot after the, uh, the cheese was being stirred and enzyme were added to speed up the whole aging and flavoring process. Uh, if you make the cheese from a real cheese, it actually takes months uh, to get to the final cheese. But if you add the enzyme, it only takes days or even uh, no more than a week. Uh, so that's how they make cheese these days uh, to speed up the process. Um, and then I found out that the, from the book, the sur surplus milk was added, um, converted to cheese. And at one time, the government, U.S. government, were buying a lot of the milk from the uh, uh, farmer, and uh, they have no place to go. But instead, of they uh, uh, but to just to uh, dump it to make cheese out of it and make all the cheese fat out of it. Um, interesting story. The story, the story about Lunchable. A uh, Lunchable is originally from Oscar Mayer, started by Bob, Bob Drain, and it goes with a lot of details about how they. Uh, he, the success of uh, starting from a uh, very small bologna sandwich uh, type of Lunchable. Now, um, I actually visited Target and saw this huge shelf uh, space of Lunchable, uh, pizza things and all kinds of different things. It's amazing how, um, how much the uh, uh, Lunchable has, has come, come so far. And and then there's a story about the, the making of the pink slime. Uh, pink slime is the um, basically uh, the, all the fat from a, from a cow, a beef, and they basically spin it such a way that they get rid of all the fat. And what's residual is this um, supposed to be lean, mean, lean meat. Uh, that's the easier to do that than uh, to just carve, it, carve a, a lean meat from a, a cow directly. And from that, they actually had to add nitrogen in there and to, um, to sanitize it to kill all the bacteria, the uh, E. coli bacteria, and, uh, and turn into a, um, they had to, and at the end, it turned into a kind of pink color thing and with the ammonia taste, and it's very really disgusting, but that's how they originally added to a, a burger. And um, I don't think they do that anymore, but that's kind of, kind of gross. And the government agency, including USDA, uh, actually helped promote meat, cheese, and milk inside and outside the country. And we're trying to force uh, countries like Mexico, uh, give them a lot of the, the cheese and the milk and all that. Um, and the correlation of saturated fat diet to lung cancer, uh, more so than, than, uh, than cigarette is. Uh, for Philip Morris, this would be another uh, nicotine, nicotine problem like the, the cigarette case. And it's interesting because Kraft at one time was owned by uh, Philip Morris. Um, and looks like the same ingredient, the fat is the, uh, the uh, nicotine in cigarette. So the last uh, part is salt. And um, the sodium in salt really pulls the fluid from our tissues into the blood, which raised the blood volume. And from that, because the extra large volume of the blood actually create more uh, blood pressure and uh, force the heart to really work harder to pump the blood. So that's how why eating a salty food uh, increases your blood pressure and it's not good for your heart. And most of the sodium and salt consumption come from processed food as people are actually cooking less at home. So that correlates with the uh, people's uh, cooking habit or eating habit. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, the salt actually make the, the, the meat taste a little bit better, uh, more tolerable, because when you uh, warm over the food uh, without the salt, uh, it tastes like a wet dog hair, uh, according to uh, the book. And more salt will make people uh, less sensitive to salt, and hence eating more of it. If you eat a lot of potato chips and you end up uh, you have to eat more uh, to get a taste out of it. But if you cut off, uh, you can go turkey on, on salt and the sensitivity will be enhanced. That means you need less of a salt. So salt, unfortunately, is not, uh, is addicting, but uh, it can easily be uh, cut off, um, not like uh, nicotine or anything. Um, and also I found out the, in, the, in the bread making process, uh, the salt actually make the uh, the bread rise a little bit slower 
and and that's a good thing if you don't you don't want the thing to to blow up and pop up. Um, so you know, I make a lot of bread myself with a bread machine, and uh, I always need to put a little bit of salt. And I finally realized that that actually not so much to increase it, uh, enhance the taste, rather than uh, make the, uh, the the fermentation process a little bit better or the uh, the yeast uh, effect a little bit more smooth. And <clears throat> And salt can, uh, like I talk about, the salt can make the warm over food taste better. Uh, if you have a lot of leftover, add some salt in there, and then you're good as new. Um, and then this one company called uh, Cargill is one of the largest supplier of salt and other farm-related products. It's an extremely profitable uh, private company. Very uh, interesting um, story about this company uh, in the book. And there's a talk about using potassium chloride as a substitute for salt, and um, but it kind of tastes bitter afterward. So um, it doesn't quite replace the salt as it is. And potato chips is a source of heavy salt consumption, and they call them. Um, and then it, because the people don't like the word fried, so they actually they call them toasted instead of fried. And that's how the marketing um, twists the truth a little bit. And it turns out there's another story about baby boomer eating, uh, aging, and eating less potato chip, but that's n and more salty food in general. Uh, and and they actually why why are they, it due to because of the um, but in general they actually eating more salt because uh, more snacking and uh, reduce home cooking. And there's a story about how the salt uh, Cargill uh, can make the salt crystal very differently to appeal to put on different product, different food product. In the case of the potato chip, they have to make a very fine crystal. So when you bite into the chip, you got the crunch taste and you got the salt uh, attached directly to your uh, the tongue right away and dissolve it right away. So this is a lot of the uh, science that go into the Crystal crystallization of salt, thanks to uh, our Cargill's uh, scientist, and um, so these kind of uh, uh, all different uh, science behind uh, behind the food industry these days. So in summary, this book um, really serve as a wake up call uh, to the reader and consumers of the da uh, the dangers of submitting yourself to uh, the seduction of salt, sugar, and fat in the processed food. The food company will do their best to uh, pander to the customers even if the products are not good for health. Um, because that's how a customer want and um, customer will get regardless it's good for them or not. So being educated, um, read the book is probably the best weapon to protect oneself from a harmful effect of the processed food. So overall, I think it's a great book, um, very informative, a lot of interesting story about the food, about different, uh, the, the food company as well. So I, I really enjoyed the book and I, I, um, I highly recommend this particular book. So that's all I have and um, thanks for watching. This is my wife's uh, flower arrangement this, this week. You can see that uh, this is the cherry blossom branches and uh, flower has uh, a little bit dried up already it was very fresh la last week so another beautiful fall arrangement from my wife today is uh, February uh, 9th and uh, Chinese New Year is coming up pretty soon on 19th I want to wish you a happy Chinese New Year. This new year will bring you a great fortune and happiness. Thanks for watching.